It's 8 p.m. and here are our top stories in 90 seconds. What we're seeing now are a spike in overdoses. Breaking right now, several front range teens have died in recent weeks because of fentanyl tainted drugs. If you get this by accident, you don't get a second chance. Now a local community will hold an emergency meeting. Winter weather across the country is delaying Colorado's vaccine shipments, but now we have to worry about a winter storm of our own. Temperatures not as cold, but there's more snow coming our way. A Denver church vandalized one day before the start of the Lenten season. Plus, the first day of the 2021 legislative session starts with a little bit of drama. I'm asking that a panel be formed to take testimony in public under oath. Hey, that Mr. Representative Hayes Valdez. Behavior. Representative Valdez. A freshman representative is called out for being in Washington, D.C. during the insurrection. We have new reaction. Really, that's not the role of the legislature. And a family in Denver found themselves in massive debt after the death of their father last month. Now they're resorting to selling everything. We've just been on a mission to try and get rid of it all. That's until generous Denver 7 viewers stepped in to help. Through the Denver 7 Gives Fund, thanks to our viewers at home, we're going to cover all those big expenses right there. This is nearly $10,000. Oh, dang. That's a lot of help. Good Tuesday evening, and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. We start with breaking news tonight in Boulder and Broomfield counties, where we are learning of several teenage deaths connected to fentanyl laced drugs. Boulder police put out an alert earlier this month that Xanax and opioid pills are being laced with deadly doses of fentanyl. Now, New Vista High School is holding an emergency meeting tomorrow night at 6. The Boulder Valley School District says no current students have died over overdoses, but they ha have had a couple of former students die. We switch gears now to our Denver 7 forecast and the snow headed our way. Visit Telluride shared these pictures with us. They say almost seven inches of new snow fell today after seven inches of new snow overnight. We send it now to Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. Mike, the front range will get snow tomorrow. That's right. We're not under an action day yet, but we'll start one at 10 o'clock tonight as the storm is getting closer. One thing it will bring in is milder air. These were the lows this morning. And these are the current readings. We're not expected to see very much in the way of bitter cold air, except way out near the Kansas border overnight tonight. But there are avalanche warnings down around Telluride, winter weather advisories as well. And there's some snow heading toward the metro area, getting some snow showers up in Weld County around the Greeley area over toward Fort Morgan, some in the foothills. That activity is going to gradually expand and move southward tonight and tomorrow. It's not going to be a huge storm for the Denver area, but it ought to be enough to bring us a couple of inches. Not as cold tonight, snow in the mountains, snow develops in Denver overnight and tomorrow, and mainly falls tomorrow night into early Thursday. But then... After we're through with all of that, much milder weather coming our way in the extended forecast. I'll have details in just a few minutes. Thank you, Mike. It's not just tomorrow's snow we have to worry about so much. It is the other storms across the country. Two major storms have shut down much of the south and southeast, and it's impacting shipments of vaccines here in Colorado. Denver 7's Addie Guajardo joins us live. And Addie, at least one vaccination clinic is delayed because of this. That's what we know right now, Jessica. The state of Colorado is expecting to receive 133,000 vaccines this week. But due to those whiteout conditions across the country, that's been brought to a stop. That's because a distribution hub in Tennessee has been delayed due to this weather. That means shipment to Colorado has also been delayed. As of now, a big vaccination event to kick off tomorrow at the ranch event complex in Loveland has been canceled because they don't have the supply they were expecting. This includes all the shot clinics they set up for the rest of the month. Hundreds of people who signed up for this event will now have to wait at least a couple more weeks before getting their vaccine. A spokesperson with Team Rubicon, a nonprofit disaster organization providing support and volunteers for the event, says the vaccination clinic will now be moved to March 6th and March 7th. We got you. We're going to be there. Um, it's going to happen. Uh, we have these setbacks, but if you can just stay safe for a couple more weeks, we're going to get that first dose in those people. 
Now we did reach out to Central Health and at this time they don't plan to cancel any appointments despite tight supplies. UC Health says they're waiting for a shipment, but as of now confident they have enough supplies on hand to keep all scheduled appointments. State health leaders say they're working with health care providers and local and state agencies to make adjustment and help prevent any appointments from being canceled. Now Colorado isn't the only one in this predicament right now. At least 20 other states are reporting setbacks due to weather conditions. So we'll keep you updated as we learn more information. Reporting live, Addie Guajardo, Denver 7. Addie, thank you. Rental assistance is coming for several communities across the Front Range to help make ends meet. Tonight, Denver City Council approved a resolution for more than $21 million in rental assistance. Also in Weld County, close to $10 million has been made available for rental relief. The U.S. Department of Treasury's Emergency Rental Assistance Program made that funding available. All new tonight at 8, a Denver church is left to clean up the damage after someone vandalized the property one day before the start of Lent. The St. Anthony of Padua Church, uh, a Catholic church, shared this video with us, showing plants destroyed and flower vases just smashed. The church doesn't have any leads on who they think could have done this. And another breaking story we're following. The mayor of Woodland Park has died. Our partners in Colorado Springs report Val Carr contracted COVID several months ago and was currently hospitalized when he lost his battle with the virus. Our thoughts and prayers go to his family tonight. Today, the state legislature reconvened for the 2021 session, and while there were important issues to tackle at hand, the session kicked off with a bit of drama. State Representative Donald Valdez called for an investigation into freshman Representative Ron Hanks. Hanks represents Park in Fremont County and went to Washington, D.C. on January 6th. This happened when Valdez was speaking. I'm asking that a panel be formed to take testimony in public under oath. Hey, that Mr. Representative Hanks Valdez, here. Representative Valdez. Representative Hanks says he was in Washington for the president's rally that day, but he says he did not enter the Capitol. Either way, other lawmakers say it is not their job to remove Hanks from office. That's not the role of the legislature, that um, Representative Hanks um, during the events in January 6th was not sworn in as a member, and, and truly he's just here to represent his constituents. State lawmakers were also busy with new bills meant to provide relief for struggling Coloradans. Tuesday had much more of the normal opening day pomp and circumstance with speeches. Democrats said they will be focusing on providing more economic relief and lowering health care costs. Republicans say they want more of a hand on how stimulus money is being spent with a new round of federal relief expected. We actually got the money last time in that COVID break during the time that we were out of session before we came back. I think this year, yes, I think there'll be more input from the legislature. I think it does change the dynamic a bit, but also I think it's a great thing that the federal government is coming in and helping the states out. We need it and we've got to get this money out to the people of Colorado. Safe gun storage, election integrity bills, and more were also brought up on the first day. The state of the state addresses tomorrow, and that's when the governor will lay out his policies for the session. Denver 7 will be streaming Governor Polis' State of the State address tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Look for Denver 7 on your favorite streaming device or visit thedenverchannel.com. We miss him a lot, so... I've been dreaming nonstop about my dad. A local family is left devastated after losing their dad, and now they're left trying to sell everything to get his body back to Texas. We've just been on a mission to try and get rid of it all. That's until our generous Denver 7 viewers stepped in. We've like, been struggling. Like, yeah, thank you. Like, this is going to help out so much. More snow is on the way. I'll let you know how much to expect in your neighborhood. Plus, coming up later, an Aurora mother has advocated for in-person learning. We're still just kind of hitting a standstill, so it's nerve-wracking. Now, as she gets deployed to the Middle East, she worries if her child will fall behind. Hopefully, like I said, that change isn't fighting to get them back in school. Um, every kid, every day, but also just advocating towards getting them the help they need to recover. 